Every seasoned gardener has opened an old compost pile that hasn't been turned for months and found it teeming with worms. More than you ever see in the freshly built or regularly turned heaps. It's like the soil itself came alive overnight. Those wriggling armies aren't there by accident. They're responding to a very specific set of conditions that only happen when compost is left undisturbed. And here's the surprising part. That lazy composting effect can actually work to your advantage. Once you understand why worms swarm to unturned compost, you can use that behavior to build richer soil faster than you ever could by constant turning. The real reason worms love unturned compost is balance, not neglect. Turning compost helps oxygenate it, but frequent turning also disturbs the biological layers that worms depend on. When a pile sits still for weeks, it naturally stratifies into zones, warm and active at the core, cooler and more stable at the edges. Those outer zones are where worms thrive. The warmth in the centre is just too intense for them during the early thermophilic phase, when temperatures reach above 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius. But once the heat fades, the microbial population explodes in the cooler, moist zones near the surface. That's when the worms move in, because that's when the food web is most abundant and accessible. Unturned compost gives worms what turned compost doesn't. Consistency. The moisture stabilizes, the pH levels mellow out, and the microbial life forms predictable layers. Worms are drawn to these steady environments where they can feed, reproduce, and tunnel without constant disruption. When we turn the pile too often, we're essentially destroying the habitat they're trying to build. In the first few weeks after building a compost pile, bacteria do most of the work generating heat that breaks down proteins, starches and sugars. But as the available food for those heat-loving microbes diminishes, fungi and actinomycetes take over, decomposing the tougher materials like cellulose and lignin, the temperature drops and the environment becomes suitable for detritivores, organisms that feed on decaying organic matter. That's when the worms arrive. Red wigglers and night crawlers are the main composting species most gardeners encounter and both prefer conditions between 55 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 to 25 degrees Celsius. When the compost reaches this stable, cooler phase, it signals to the worms that the feast is ready. They come in through the bottom and edges, working their way inward as the material softens. The unturned compost essentially becomes a living worm bin, an ecosystem powered by worms, microbes and fungi in perfect cooperation. When worms move into a compost pile, they don't just break down organic matter faster, they transform it into something fundamentally different. As they feed on decomposed material and microbes, their digestive systems concentrate nutrients and inoculate them with beneficial bacteria. What comes out the other end, the castings, is the most valuable fertilizer nature produces. In unturned compost, worms can operate undisturbed for months, converting a higher percentage of material into castings than they can in frequently turned piles. Each worm produces roughly its own body weight in castings every day under ideal conditions. So, when thousands of worms swarm into an unturned compost pile, they can transform it into a nutrient-rich vermicompost without you ever lifting a fork. To use this to your advantage, stop turning your pile after the initial heating phase. If you've built a hot compost pile with the right balance, roughly three parts carbon, or browns, to one part nitrogen or greens, let it heat for about three weeks. Once the temperature starts dropping below 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius, cover it lightly with straw or cardboard and leave it alone. Within another few weeks you'll notice worms gathering near the bottom and sides. That's your signal that the pile is maturing naturally. The main reason worms thrive in unturned compost is stable moisture. Turning the pile too often dries it out, especially in warm climates. Unturned compost, on the other hand, retains a steady level of humidity. 
providing the damp, oxygenated environment worms need to move and breathe. To encourage this, water your pile deeply after the initial turn-down period, enough to make it feel like a wrung-out sponge. Then cover it. A thick mulch of straw, burlap or old carpet will trap moisture and keep the top layer dark. Worms will travel upward at night to feed on the decomposing surface material and retreat during the day to cooler layers. This movement creates a natural aeration process that replaces your manual turning. When the bottom of your compost pile turns dark and crumbly, you can start harvesting. Worms naturally migrate upward toward fresh food, so the lower third of the pile is usually rich in castings. Scoop from the bottom, leaving the upper layers undisturbed, so the worm population can keep growing. Mix those castings directly into garden beds or dilute them into compost tea. By leaving part of the pile intact each time you harvest, you maintain a continuous composting system. The worms stay active, the microbial balance remains stable, and you always have a batch maturing while another is ready to use. The biggest lesson from all this is that compost doesn't always need constant human interference. Worms thrive in systems that mimic nature, steady, layered and undisturbed. By allowing compost to evolve through its own stages, you create an environment where biology takes over the workload. For gardeners who value efficiency and soil health, this approach pays off in quality over speed. The resulting compost is more balanced, richer in microbial life and loaded with worm castings that can't be replicated by fast-turned systems. So next time you're tempted to grab a fork and turn your pile for the tenth time, stop. Let it settle. Cover it, moisten it and give it time. The worms will come on their own, drawn by the conditions that only stillness creates. They'll turn your scraps into gold while you focus on the garden beds waiting to be fed. If you found this guide helpful and want more proven, science-backed composting wisdom, make sure to subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this video with a fellow grower. Here, we don't chase trends. We dig into what really works, straight from the soil up.